In this small video tutorial, I want to talk about perpendicular frames, how you can use it to produce a parametric pattern or a curve. Uh, you will understand how you can uh, produce a repeating pattern and use these numbers. Okay, we can make it a helix or more pattern. We can give it simple uh, multiple patterns into the uh, repeating uh, vector moving, I will uh, explain about the x and the y axis, how you can use the perpendicular frames to actually uh, move the points and how you can even use it to produce an offset effect or you just produce an offset curve. So this is a good understanding about the perpendicular frames and how it works and how you can use it in your projects. Uh, and you can easily find perpendicular frames by double clicking on the canvas and searching for PER and here we go, it's the perpendicular frames tool which we will be using. So first of all for this example and this small video tutorial about perpendicular frames, uh, we need a curve so I can just draw a curve in Rhino and here we go is a simple curve and what I'm going to do is going to import this from the parms menu as a curve okay I'm going to put bifocals here and uh, extracting the perpendicular frames we can uh, produce the pattern the base of this pattern let me just draw a better one so uh, we can just have this curve uh, then we can just search for PER, perpendicular frames. So we can have several perpendicular frames. And we can give it a number, the count of the frames. So you can see that I can increase the frames. The size of this plane can be defined by going to display and choosing the preview plane size. So I can go to the preview plane size and put it for a 5. Okay, so the next part is to how we can use these frames to produce a geometry or a parametric geometry. What I'm going to do is to extract the center point of these frames and use these uh, vectors to produce the uh, geometry. So uh, we can go to the vector section and basically deconstruct the planes so you can use uh, this is just a one way of using perpendicular frames you can use it for other things you can just rotate the frames uh, which I will also give a video tutorial on the grasshopper tutorial section on the courses uh, so you can use uh, use it to produce a, a rotating frame but for now uh, to understand more about the um, perpendicular frames you can deconstruct the planes I'm going to deconstruct this plane and use the X or the Y uh, vectors to produce the pattern. So what I'm going to do is to use the move tool here and I'm going to move the origin of the planes so we can move the origin of the plane. If we move the, uh, the points in the X direction, so let's just multiply this in the mathematical in the math section multiply the x vector with a number and give this to the move you can see that we can simulate an offset easily by doing this let me just increase the number and if we just give it a minus 10 to plus 10 you can see we can offset the point and do this easily so uh, basically an offset is uh, the points of the perpendicular frames moving in the x direction you can just connect these points to uh, perform an offset so I want to give it a pattern so I'm going to delete this and let's assume that we want to move these points one in the outside and uh, another in the inside so we can just m produce a pattern so I'm going to give a number here. The better thing that we can do is to go to the Parm section 
and use uh, something called the gene pool. So you can use it for the different variables. I'm going to use the gene pool. I'm going to give it from one minus 20 to 20, and I'm going to give it four patterns. So we can control this, okay? So you can see that I'm going to give it four patterns. And what I'm, if I connect this to the multiplication, what happens here, uh, let me just explain. So if you check this out, let me just make this curve a little bit bigger. Okay, so the first number is going for the first point. Uh, and basically you can see this by typing the curve seam. And you can see that the seam of this curve is starting from here. So the first uh, perpendicular frame will start from here too. So if I change this number, you can see that the first point is moving uh, minus uh, 8 in the x direction. The second will move with this number. And the third will be this one. And what happens to the fourth and so on? is that when we change this number all of the other points are going to change and that is because we have 40 points here but we have four moving vectors so what's going to happen is that uh, the first vector is going for the first point the second is going for the second point uh, the third is going for the third point and because the list is longer than this list it's called the long list uh, the fourth is going for the fourth and all for the other uh, uh, basically origins so uh, we need 40 numbers repeating this pattern so we can have a repeated pattern we can go and use a, a command called repeat and we can repeat this data to 40 times and that is because when we divide a curve to 40 sections if it's an open curve let me just explain this. If we have an open curve and divide it into, uh, let me just set this. If I divide it into three parts, we will have four, okay, we have three parts, but we have four perpendicular frames. So if we want to repeat it for a, uh, an open curve, we have to give this length a boost. So I'm going to give it x plus one and Let's just connect this and make it more. Let's just turn this off. You can see that the patterns is emerging. We can connect these points by going to the curve and choosing uh, interpolate. An interpolation will be fine. And we can produce the pattern. So let me just show you with a simple curve what's happening here you can see that the pattern is just repeating and we can change this but if we give it to a closed curve uh, when we divide it into uh, 17 sections it's going to be 17 numbers because the first perpendicular frame and the last one will be the same so I'm going to give this and uh, delete the x plus 1 expression and we also have to uh, connect this okay so I'm going to go to the periodic uh, curve and set it to true and another point is that if you check this out you can see that there's a bug here there's a um, wrong connection here and that's because we have uh, let's say for uh, 17 uh, number of points and we have four and when we repeat it it's the it's not a multiplication of four so how we can do this how how we can uh, uh, correct the number of patterns so maybe we have two patterns okay and you can see that the pattern is just moving so i'm going to give it maybe five patterns and we can just change this by a little bit of uh, and knowledge of the lists and of the index numbers so i'm going to go to the sets and I'm going to choose list lengths to count the patterns. So it's easily counting these patterns. How many patterns do we have? We have five. And we can easily multiply this by a number. So maybe we want three times. 
So 3 times 5 is 15. And we can safely connect this to the count and connect this to the lengths. So we always know that there is three times of this pattern. Okay, let's just change this. And let's just turn everything off uh, except the interpolation. And here we go. Okay, so you can see that there is three patterns of this. And if I increase that, okay, let's just go for two. You can see that there is two times this pattern uh, happening and you can just define a number you can give it a simple pattern you can also go to this degree part and give it a one because the default is three and three is for nerves curve and we can just give it a one to three maybe and go and use an odd number okay you can see we have polyline and the nerves curve and let's just draw this with a circle this is going to be simple one okay and let's just have two patterns maybe a minus and a plus and you can see we can just define how many of these patterns are going to have uh, how we can define this uh, and we can also change it to the nerve section we can also have more maybe just seven patterns we want here we can right click and just randomize all the numbers in the gene pool and have a random pattern here and you can just change it and define it here okay so this is a simple technique you can use perpendicular frame it's uh, you can use it in many other ways but this is a simple tutorial of how you can use the uh, perpendicular frames to produce uh, the pattern you can also use the um, y uh, okay let me just show you the y direction too to give it a boost and make it in 3d okay so i'm going to have another pattern here let's say just multiply this by the y-axis and just sum up this x and y-axis so I'm going to sum up the x and the y and give it to the motion so you can see that we will have a pattern here we can define uh, another uh, pattern okay maybe just define this one maybe give it another motion into the y but you have to have the same number in the both x and y uh, patterns okay let's just, let me just make it into nerves it's going to be better okay and if we give it uh, two uh, okay let's just assume that we have two patterns in the y direction we have to con uh, correct these uh, by repeating them okay repeating them and uh, this time it's going to be 63 times so I'm going to connect the list lengths to this result and use this for the Y so this is for the advanced users uh, which want to see that we can have that okay so we have uh, the data it's the length is 63 we don't need a list length I'm going to delete this just connect the 63 to the length and here we go you can see the pattern let me just make this going up and down maybe we have just four patterns here I just want to say that you can combine it with the Y direction and add it up so you can simply have this okay maybe we want four patterns here uh, one's going to be a zero then it's a plus again it's a zero you can see that okay and let's just go into something more deep so that's going to be a zero just a little bit hard in the gene pool to give it a zero but you can just manage this by okay I'm going to have this okay something like that you can see that if I go minus zero 
plus zero and if the minus is just uh, as the same as the plus you can have an helix there that's a simple way okay let's just have a pipe go to the surface and connect a pipe to this curve and see that the result okay and that's the result so this is a simple tutorial of how you can use perpendicular frames to define any pattern you want on a, any curve and define how many times you want to uh, just uh, repeat it and that's it you can use this technique and we can also change these if we want more complicated patterns okay so here we go and that's the technique or you can just simply give it just a number slider so it's maybe 10 this is a good technique to have exactly an helix so I'm going to give it a 10 and a 0 and again a negative 10 so that's a negative 10 and a 0 so how can we just manage these numbers I'm going to give uh, uh, from the params menu a number tool and go for 10 0 minus 10 and again another 0 so here we go 10 0 minus 10 0 and we give this to the pattern we can just change the number and here we go we're good to go and we can change the number of these patterns we can have whatever we want but it will be just like a helix pattern up and down the uh, curve and here we go we can just have the pipe so this is a simple way of how you can use the frames and how you can play with the frames to produce patterns and work with them and thank you for watching if you have any questions or uh, have any problems about the perpendicular frames uh, feel free to ask underneath this video we will also have a video tutorial about the perpendicular frames and basically what we're going to do in that uh, okay let me just show you the to the patterns okay let's go to the projects I'm going to show you some of the uh, good ones okay here we go turning exactly something like this you can also use the perpendicular frames to produce uh, a pattern like this uh, and uh, or maybe something like this it's just an easy way but uh, I don't want to make it just a, a long video tutorial it's just a small one to understand the perpendicular frames it's about the grasshopper commands and thank you for watching